the economy, jobs. It has been such an important priority of the governors to uh, diversify Florida's economy and to create jobs. I know that's something that you have attempted to do yourself as speaker. What's the report card in terms of being able to pass legislation to create jobs? I'd say so far, and, and we're not done with the session yet, but I'd give the governor an A-plus in terms of both focus and effort, uh, and I'd give sort of collectively all of us an A in terms of keeping our eye on the ball. You know, literally, jobs in the economy is the number one issue, no matter whom you ask, at every layer of the economy, and I think the House, the Senate, and the governor have all been working on that. We've, the, you know, the governor likes to talk about the three enemies to job growth, taxation, litigation, and regulation, and I think that's a great uh, synopsis. We've made a lot of strides on uh, reducing the tax burden on, you know, working men and women and small businesses and working families. We have made um, pretty good strides, I think, in, in reducing litigation, trying to give people a, a stable, predictable uh, legal climate to go take calculated risks. And we've made strides on regulation, reducing uh, overburdensome or redundant regulation. If there was an area where I think we could do, where we still need to do more work, where we would get, you know, maybe not an A plus, but a, uh, a B, would be reducing regulatory burden. And, and I want to be very clear about that. That doesn't mean we should just unregulate things and allow bad things to happen. There is an absolute necessary role for proper regulation. What we should avoid is redundant, time-wasting, money-wasting, uh, job-killing regulation where uh, businessmen and women don't know uh, how to get a response from their government. They're willing to comply with any regulation you give them, but when there is inefficiency and instability in the carrying out of those rules, it just discourages people from, from hiring people who need a job. And so I think that's one we could continue to improve on. Can you give an example of that kind of regulation that you think needs to be done away with? Well, I can give you an example of, of two anecdotes, for example, that are fairly recent. Uh, here in Tallahassee, and these deal with local government, not as much state government, uh, there was an opening uh, football game weekend. A new barbecue restaurant uh, was opening up. It had as a feature a roof, uh, a chimney, that emitted water mist to simulate smoke. Uh, a local government official shut them down for air pollution because the code said anything that emits visible vapors is air pollution, okay? It's water mist. We're in Florida. That's not air pollution. It didn't take a rocket science to figure that out, but a, a small businessman who risked his capital to open a restaurant in Tallahassee on a football game weekend was delayed because a government person took a regulation, misinterpreted it, or unreasonably applied it, and stymied commerce. Back in my district in Winter Park, there was a guy who wanted to expand his concrete block building so he could double, almost double the size of his store and hire six more people. He had 12 employees, he wanted to hire six more. Uh, there was a fight between the city of Winter Park and Orange County over they couldn't agree who was gonna inspect his uh, like sewer pipes or something like that. And for it took him 11 months to sort through that. He finally called me in frustration and we knocked it out in about two months. For, for 11 months, there were six people who weren't working there who could have been. That kind of thing drives small businessmen and women crazy. And sometimes at a bigger level, when people want to build a big uh, development, for example, the local governments will tell them everything's okay, and then they'll come up here to Tallahassee, and uh, a DEP or DOT or some state agency will hold up their permits. That delay, I think Lawton Charles used to call it the red tape tax. It's a tax that they pay, not, not overtly, but those months and months of delay cost money and they cost jobs. And so I think that's, that's the type of thing we should focus on. We need to preserve our higher environmental standards, preserve our high public safety standards, but make sure they're, they're not uh, killing people by running out the clock on them.